Welcome to another video. You learned about even and odd functions in pre-calculus or maybe in algebra too. But now let's see what even and odd functions mean to us as we move into calculus. Most importantly, let's recall what the definitions are. What is an even function and what's an odd function? And what happens when we multiply two functions, one of them even, the other odd, or two odd functions, or two even functions, or even when we add or subtract them? What do we get at the end of the day? What happens when we differentiate an even function? What happens when we integrate an even function? And does it save us time? Let's find out. Let's get into it. Let's start with the definitions. A function is even. If this is true, f of x is even if f of negative x is equal to f of x. That is the definition of an even function. A function is even if you change the input, if when you change the input to the negative, you will still get the same function. And the most common example of this, all polynomials of even degree, okay? Or all constants, actually. So the, the simplest example of this is a constant. If f of x equals zero, then it doesn't matter what you do, you will always get zero. And zero is an even function. Or f of x equals one, or two, or three. If it's a constant, then it is an even function. So let's just write examples. Examples are f of x equals a constant. Let's say c, where c is constant. c is constant. That's an even function. Okay, now, what about f of x is equal to x to the n, where n is even. n is even. Okay, so n is even is an even function. Okay, now, what else do we have? We have um, f of x is the cosine of x. Let's just take this that way, okay? The cosine function is also an even function. There are many other even functions that you're going to get, but these are the common ones, and these are the ones I want to work with today. Okay, let's talk about odd functions. f of x is odd if our f of negative x is equal to negative of f of x. My mind was drifting into the examples. So this is the definition. When you put a negative, there's gonna be a negative on the back. So you get the opposite sign of the original function. That's an odd function. You change the input to the negative, your output is gonna be the negative of what you had before. Okay, so here we go. Examples. So we have f of x equals, um, let's take x to the n, generally for a polynomial, x to the n where n is odd. Okay, whenever n is odd, so when you have x to the first power, x to the third power, all these will give you an odd, that's an example. Another example is the trig function sine, f of x equals sine x is an odd function. Those are two common ones because I'm gonna be using bo both polynomials and trig functions, these ones on the board, I'm gonna stop there. Now you can do your research and find other functions you can easily tell are even or odd, but let's work with these ones. So let's build on what we just looked at. We already see that if it's an even function, it follows this definition. And these are examples, which I'm gonna use. Now this is a constant, k. And remember, if x is raised to the power zero, you, that's, that's a constant. Anything raised to power zero is one, right? So let's just assume that this is one. And because it's even, see, it's the same thing. So in this case, this is sine. And by the way, if you, if you try to evaluate sine of negative x, it's the same thing as negative sine x. That's the implication. So implication of this is the sine of negative, let me say theta is the same thing as negative 
sine theta. That's the meaning of being odd. And for being even, the cosine of negative theta is the same thing as cosine theta. And the graph can always give that away. Now, what happens when we multiply an even function by an odd function? Would it be even or would it be odd? So, let's talk about product. So, if we multiply even functions by odd functions, what will we get? So, let's write an even function x squared times an odd function. Oh, let's use this is this is odd. What is x squared times? Let's put a dot here times x. What do we get? We get x cubed. What do you see? It's clearly an odd function. So whenever you multiply an even function by an odd function, what you get is odd. Even times odd is odd. Now, if you want to remember, always look at even functions as positive numbers and look at odd functions as negative numbers. So when you multiply positive by negative, you'll always get negative, which is odd when you do the analogy of, uh, of functions. So don't do even and odd numbers because that would not work. Because if you say this is an even number, even numbers times odd numbers give you even numbers. So don't use the even number analogy for functions. Treat an even function as a positive number an odd function as a negative number because the negative is, is, is significant. Okay, you can't ignore it. Okay, and then you know the product of positive and negative will always be negative. Okay, so that's the same thing. Even times odd is always odd. And that's a perfect example. So if someone told you, if asked you this question, is this an even or an odd function? Let's say we take, um, um, This is even cosine x multiplied by sine x. Is this an even or an odd function? Well, this is an even function. This is an odd function. Even times odd is going to give you odd, remember. Okay, so this function is odd. Now, it's important for you to know whether what you're dealing with when you take the integral over a boundary, a particular boundary, especially a symmetric boundary, it is, it is always good for you to know whether you're dealing with an odd or an even function. That way, sometimes you don't even need to do any calculation. You just know that the function you have is even or odd. Okay, let's go somewhere here. Products. Um, what about we have odd times odd? So this is the first one. Let's do the second one. If you multiply two odd functions, odd times odd, what would it be? Would it be odd or even? Remember, treat it as if they are numbers. Is this an even? I'm oh, sorry. Is this a positive number or a negative number? Remember, treat odd functions as negatives. So negative times negative is positive. So it's going to be even. So a good example is if I take an odd function x sine x is an even function. Because this is odd and this also is odd. Let's take one more. What if we multiply two even functions? What if we do x squared times cosine x? That's an example. x squared times cosine x. What would it be? So this is going to be even times even. Hey, come on. Even times even. What would it be? Will be this is positive times positive is going to be positive even. So that's it. So x squared cosine x is going to be an even function. It's going to be even. Okay, so one more thing you need to know. What if we are not multiplying? What if we are adding or subtracting? Okay, now that's easy for you to cope with because this is what you ask yourself. If I add a positive number to a negative number, what do I get? Well, I don't really know. It depends on which of the numbers is more powerful, which one is more influential. So you cannot tell whether the sum of an even, so if we have even plus or minus odd, we cannot tell what exactly we get. So it is unknown. It could be anything. So this is unknown. 
So even plus odd is unknown, even minus odd is unknown. Okay, so why are we knowing all of these things? Well, this is where I'm driving you to. Remember, the topic of this video was uh, the calculus of odd and even functions. When you integrate an odd function, your output is an even function. It just switches the property. The same thing when you differentiate, it switches the property. So you want to know what function you're going from to where you're going, because I'm going to need this understanding in other videos I'm going to do, especially at the beginning of the Fourier series that I'm going to talk about. So here, we know, so note, when you integrate an even function, what comes out of it is odd. And that's very easy for you to see. Watch this. Example. If we integrate x squared, what's our answer? Our answer is going to be one-third of x cubed. This is an even function. This is an odd function. Now this constant, let's, let's ignore the constant for now, okay? Because I know you're going to go, oh, the constant makes it not sure. But let's assume we're not talking about this. If you integrate x squared, you're going to get one third of x cubed. You can always make this constant zero, okay? So that it doesn't affect what we're doing. But this is odd. And the same thing if you differentiate x squared. Watch this. D dx of x squared, what would you get? This is going to become 2x. This is an odd function. So the calculus of an even function, whether it is integral calculus or differential calculus, you're going to get the opposite characteristic of the function. Okay, and the same thing if we started from odd, it goes to even. But the ultimate fact that I want you to go with right now is this. When you integrate any odd function from negative a to a, so this is, a, this is symmetric boundaries. Remember, odd functions must pass through the origin. So you're coming from, the, from one side to the other side, either from the bottom to the top or the top to the bottom, it doesn't matter. But if you go from negative one to one, from negative pi to pi, from negative infinity to infinity, and the function you have here is odd, that's why it is important to know what you're going to be working with. Once you get this, your answer, let me put dx, okay? Let odd be a function of x. Your answer will always be zero. It does not matter how complicated what is in here is. Which means, if we go back to the examples that we've done, if you integrate this and you give it a boundary from negative something to that same something, your answer will be zero. You don't need to do any computation. This is the characteristic that I want you to go with. The integral within a symmetric boundary of an odd function is always equal to zero. Now, there's something even more fascinating that's going to be in the next video, but I'm going to keep that for now. Don't forget and never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.